Hello everyone. Today we will be talking another topic and which is related to economics. So here we will highlight some basic concept of economics and the features of microeconomics. It is imperative that you should have information, a first information about what is economics before we proceed to the core concepts of microeconomics. So these concepts will serve as our foundation or your foundation as we proceed to the succeeding topics in this course or in this subject. So let's define first what is economics. Uh, perhaps you have already uh, your previous knowledge and um, familiar concepts that you've had during your high school. So hope that you can recall it right now. So the general concept of economics, it comes from the two Greek words, which is oikos and nomos. Oikos means household and nomos means management. So in general or in, in combination, this is what we call the household management. So the question now is, why is it household management? Primarily, economics starts with dealing scarce resources at home. Okay, so it deals with the available resources the limited resources in, in our house and uh, on how we are going to allocate that resources for the satisfaction of the family members or the household members. And bringing it up, it will be talking with how our society deals with the scarce resources and uh, how will they allocate that to the unlimited wants and needs of the individual or the members of the society. So another definition of the economics, it's a social science that deals with the efficient allocation of scarce resources to satisfy man's unlimited wants and needs. So perhaps you already know that the difference between wants and needs and literally people has no satisfaction. I don't know if you agree with that, but if you agree or you don't agree, you comment down here for your reasons. But for me, people has limited, unlimited ones. Now, every now and then, we, we wanted to have this and have that. Now, and sometimes we prioritize our ones over our needs. So there are three points here. Let's talk about the three points. First, economics is social science because it deals with our society. And uh, number two, it deals with the efficient allocation. So why is it efficient? Because it deals with the limited resources and how these limited resources can be able to satisfy the unlimited wants and needs of the individual. And uh, number three, it deals with the needs of the uh, and the wants of individuals. So people have different wants and needs, have different needs and wants. Uh, but basically, all we are are trying to survive in our society. So the thought now of economics, how were we able to meet our satisfaction in terms of our wants and of our needs? Okay, so another here to sum it up, the economics is defined as a social science uh, since the economics or the economics deals with people and uh, it's dealing with the welfare of its people that's why they are taking care of the decisions our economy or our um, leaders or economic economies rather are trying to decide or to make different um, decisions or different alternative decisions in order to maintain or to obtain the welfare of its people. Secondly, it is concerned with the proper allocation of the resources in order to satisfy human wants. And uh, number three, it, it covers or, or the need, it specifies our needs and wants. So in your case, you have to define first in analyzing economics, you have to define what are the things that you consider as needs and what are the things that you consider as wants. But basically, the needs are those things that we cannot survive without it. Well, wants is the opposite of that.
Now, since economics is a social science, do you think it is related to other political sciences? If yes, you comment on but you comment down here in the comment box and you explain or you give us you give me your idea. And do you think economics could also be a natural science? What's your idea on this? So you can comment in what way through our comment box, or you can also share that on the class. So there are two branches of economics. First is macroeconomics, and the second one is microeconomics. So this subject is all about microeconomics, so the basic microeconomics. So we'll be talking first with the microeconomics. It studies on a specific things, on making decisions for individual or small units in the economy. So like, for example, households. It studies the individual demand and supply and the uh, use of relative prices, like for example, pricing strategy of a firm. Uh, another one is production decision of a firm or the production decision of the industry. That's for microeconomics. On the other side, for macroeconomics, it, it pertains to the relationship of broad economic sectors or the entire national or global economy. So like, for example, the aggregate demand, the aggregate supply, and we'll be also talking with national income, unemployment, and inflation are just common problems in the macroeconomics. So um, there are, okay, so there are also, oh yeah, so this is the same as well, macroeconomics and microeconomics. This is additional definition, which studies on the aggregate supply again and the aggregate demand. So let's just keep on this slide and let's proceed to another slide here which will have the question in ourselves right now why do we need to study economics you right now as a student why do you need to have the subject why do you need to understand the essence of economics number one because we are part of the society we are living in the same country whatever happens in our economy we're part of it our demands and supplies in the market are analyzed. You know? So basically prices are just relying to the volume or to the amount of demands that we are making of every day or every time. So like even in the stocks, no? so stocks prices changes and varies depending on the demand of the consumers or the purchasers. Okay, so it helps you understand the basic reason for studying the marketplace and the economic system in general. Like, for the young students or young adults right now, I don't know if you are familiar with the prices of the gasoline, the prices, or you are aware of the prices right now of the gasoline, the prices of the goods and the services, and um, even the prices of the rice. So I think it's part of here in the economics that you must be aware and vigilant, or uh, sorry for the term, but uh, I call it vigilant because sometimes consumers has to or is really need to become aware and more aware of the prices and of what is happening in the market okay why because this might uh, enable us to to totally balance balance our budget or to totally meet our satisfaction so it depends on us now it allows also you as a student to understand Tend the signal from the marketplace, the nature and the cost of products. Since um, for, for your case, no, you are a fan of purchasing, a fan of ordering products in online. So you must be at some point try to compare products at the different stores. Okay. So it interacts with almost all other disciplines and is intertwined with current events and has profound impact on political events so it exactly answers to the question a while ago if economics relates to the other disciplines such as politics and such as um, natural science no? and uh, uh, other disciplines that is mentioned so there are two approaches also in economics it is our view on the circumstances or phenomenon of events. So it could be positive or normative economics. So for positive economics, it's more of a facts and objective in nature. So it describes the occurrence of the phenomenon in a descriptive manner. While for 
normative, it talks with a judgmental manner in terms of or a subjective manner. It it, it pertains to the views of individuals no, or of a certain sector towards the uh, certain circumstances or phenomenon or occurrence of phenomenon. Okay, like um example of the positive economics is the government is producing rights to fill in the gap of the rice shortage. For normative naman, the example is the government should produce rice so that rice shortage will be eliminated. So see, the difference here is like the normative is more of your personal view or opinions. Okay, whereas the positive economics is more in facts. So moving on, um, the basic economic activities pertains to the production, the distribution, and the exchange and consumptions of products and uh, services now how would it enable to reach the single household so in production it's literally the conversion of the raw materials towards the final product or the conversion of inputs towards the outputs so later on discuss that then ano ba yung kadalasan na tinatawag natin sources of productions or uh, the raw materials next is for distribution it's the ways in which the goods would be delivered to the consumers so if you can recall the time of your grandmothers or grandfathers usually they are not having this accessibility or this better ways highly technological ways in delivering the product so um, you might observe that before they are using horse or kalesa push carts and non-conventional um, ways, not like airplanes and cargo. So for now, we are using more, more of highly technological ways, like we are using cargoes, no, airplanes, and the like. Okay. And for exchange, it involves the monetary or non-monetized, or this is common as barter system or counter trade system. So whenever before, if you can go back, Again, at the time of your grandmothers or grandfathers or parents, um, barter system is very common to the transaction. So you give them the land and you'll give them, and you will have the gold bar in return. But for now, since a barter system doesn't last long because it does not quantify the amount of goods, so and the value of the good itself, therefore, um, how would the processes of payment would have for the consumers and the buyers. And the last one is the consumption. So the product is at the hand of the consumer or customer or the buyer. So they were able to have and reach the goods produced for them. Okay, so moving on, products, productions, production rather, also addresses the basic economic questions. May mga basic economic questions. So um, these are also considered as the basic economic problems. No? So number one, what to produce? Ano ba yung mga i-produce ng mga products? And this answers to what are the demands as well of the people? How much to produce? No? In the economy, we're trying to look for the balance, no? the equilibrium state of the supply and demand. So it shouldn't be that there will be lots of production because mag, mag over ang supply natin. So what happened to the uh, vegetables in Baguio? Diba? So it was just uh, given to people na lang, no? nalalata na lang sa, nalata na lang sa kalsada. Okay? And uh, how to produce? No? So in the Philippines, you might be thinking of the ways in the farmers or the farmers are able to produce their goods and services. So medyo behind tayo as compared to highly technological na mga firms or mga companies, no? specifically Japan and US, China. So sa atin is we are still sticking to the old and traditional ways of farming, no? nag aararo and then more of human labor. Okay, so or labor intensive. Yung other countries are more of capital or technological intensive. They are more of technology rather than labors. Okay, another question is for whom to produce. So who are the people or the, it's speaking of the target market or the market, the consumers who will be using that good or, or who will be consuming that product. 
And the last one is uh, at what price to produce. Okay, so it's also important to know that there must be an appropriate price to have with your product because it's not allowed as well to have overpricing here in our country. Okay, so um, speaking of the um, factors of production, a while ago I've mentioned no, that this uh, these are in terms of production, these are the uh, factors or the raw materials or the inputs. No? So yung production, we define it as the conversion of inputs to outputs. So ano ba yung mga inputs? No? So these are the land, labor, capital, and enterprise. Or this is also known as entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial activity. It depends on it. Okay, so yung land, uh, these are pertaining to the nat natural resources which are available for production. So right now, no, so we could able to reflect and think may mga resources pa ba na available that is free. No? So parang hangin, uh, even the, the air, sometimes kailangan natin ng electrifying no? para may hangin. No? Or, or, um, even the stones right now are sold already. The land, the soil, no, and everything, or almost everything are being sold. No? And then for labor, the human input into the production process. So actually, ang Philippines halaga is very abundant on the laborers. No? Ang dami natin population, or ang laki ng population natin, that's why we are also booming with the laborers. But however, no, sa, sa kadami ng mga laborers natin, the result is that they go to the other countries para mag, doon maghanap ng trabaho. Kasi nagkaroon din tayo ng problems with unemployment. Okay? Specifically at the time of pandemic. And then for the capital, this is the goods used in the supply of other products. So this is not only pertaining to the cash no, or the money. This also pertains to the material, uh, the equipments that is being used, like for example, in, in the factory. So, paano ba ma, pada, paano ma produce no? ng maraming products no? in, in a shorter time? So, it has to have its, its uh, I mean, the equipment no? that is necessary for the uh, production. And then, last one is entrepreneurs uh, organize factors of productions and take risks. So ito yung mga businessmen, no, entrepreneurs, young entrepreneurs, and all, all the types of entrepreneurs that are trying to take the risk to have the production necessary. Okay, so um, economic system natin are divided or described into four. These are the mixed economic system, the traditional, the market, and the command uh, economic system. So I am pretty sure that you have discussed this well on your subject in your senior high school, but I hope you could still remember that one. So what's the difference between the four, four economic systems? So let's talk about the characteristics. Actually, it's just simple to describe, no? but let's present it here. For traditional, uh, basically they are on... Uh, than uh, the old system of doing or living life, okay? Or just producing products for your own good or for your own families, no? Uh, commonly, ang ginagawa is uh, relies on barter, produce what is needed, little waste, hunter and gather society, gather a society and based on small communities, families, and tribes. That's for the traditional, whereas for the command economic system, this um, pertains to having the central powers, no? which the government controls and own the means of production. So, ang government then um, nag-decide nag nag what to produce and what is necessary to produce and how much. They also slow to respond to economic change due to centralized nature and power. And lastly, the entrepreneurship is suppressed, contributing to fewer choices. So it's uh, really on the state of uh, command by the central state or by the government. Next is the capitalist or the market no, economic system. So private enterprise owns the means of production 
in government does not involve itself in the economic decisions. So it also runs on its self-interest and competition, which benefits society through the uh, invisible hand. And uh, it's based on market mechanism of supply, demand, and uh, prices, which allocates the resources. So last one here is on the mixed economic system. So it's a combination of the command and the um, free market. So means of production is controlled by both private enterprises and government and um, government influence supply and demand through regulation and interventionist policies. So they intervene uh, in terms of pricing of goods and services and in controlling the demand. And capital is reallocated based on the need. And uh, the profit as well is the main driver, but governments use this to help improve the mobility of the country. So, or in the economic system of one country. So my question to you right now is what type of economic system does the Philippine apply? So if you know it, comment down here below and let me know your ideas. Okay, so features of microeconomics. So your microeconomics uh, focuses its topic on the price theory, partial equilibrium and welfare economics. economics. For price theory, so it, it uh, the system of determining the price of the resources and prices of products is the focus of microeconomics. So it, it answers with how much resources owner can get through factor payments and uh, how sellers charge their commodities. So aside from that, the uh, um, this is also one of the reasons why the um, microeconomics is termed as price theory because it analyzes the determination or the price determination where the consumer maximizes its utility and produces their profit. So with this aspect, the, uh, um, the, the microeconomics tries to achieve its market equilibrium. And then second one is the partial equilibrium. Um, microeconomics is prone into using various assumptions, like for example, the Citarius Paribus. No? So in order to analyze the impact of a particular factor to a single unit of analysis, um, the Citarius Paribus assumption is used. And that is what partial equilibrium is about. It's an analysis on equilibrium position of a particular individual economic unit, like for example, uh, consumer, producer, or market. It isolates the analysis on a particular economic unit by letting other factors as constant. And this aspect will be dealt under demand, supply, uh, production, and cost concepts in uh, the following discussions that we'll be having through. And then last one is on the welfare economics. So generally, the thought of economics is for the general welfare of its people or of its agents. It evaluates the efficiency of resources in order to come up a maximum output that can address and satisfy to the needs and wants of the consumers. So likewise, it also ensures the relative desirability on the decision of economics agent economic agent like for example um, like if it is conducive for a firm to charge a predetermined price um, that could benefit other agents like the consumer or competitors okay so that's it for our discussion on the introduction to economics thank you very much for watching